Welcome to our live stream. I hope that you are able to hear me. Uh, let me test the sound before. Welcome to our... Yes. Um, welcome. We are a lot of people, to be honest, way more people than expected, but I'm super happy about it. Um, so maybe you just can write in the chat whether you are able to hear me or not. Hannah is already writing uh, that everything is looking fine. Uh, awesome. Um, this is our second webinar on this YouTube channel and we can do uh, way more in future as well. Depends on your uh, questions today. I'm super happy to, uh, to see so many people here right now. And uh, I prepared a few slides because of course I, I collected some questions uh, before. So uh, I know already a lot of questions uh, flying around. Uh, and we had a meetup, for example, in our office, and there were a lot of questions as well. That's the reason why it, why I prepared already uh, answers to the most frequent asked questions. Um, but if you uh, have additional questions, uh, just write them in the chat. To be honest, I cannot say that I, I will be able to answer all of them, but I think most of them I should be able to answer. And what I can uh, promise is that I will find the answer. And if you check out our YouTube channel, we have uploaded already a lot of uh, videos um, about freelancing in Germany, how to register a business in Germany, um, how to handle with the tax authorities in Germany and all the stuff. So there are already a few um, uh, yeah, uh, videos online and you can, uh, of course, watch all of them please afterwards and not now. Um, exactly, but I some, sometimes today I, I will just mention a few videos and will just post the, the link in the chat because um, it would be too much to explain every single step and every uh, individual situation right now here in, in this webinar. That's the reason why we prepared a lot. And if you check out the video description, you can see a lot. So uh, I, I, I posted the link for, for the presentation so you just can uh, read through this afterwards as well. If you don't have uh, time right now for, for an hour, of course, you just can watch the recording uh, later as well. So this uh, video will, be, will stay online and you just can watch this later as well. Then we have a Telegram group. Maybe a few of you are already in this Telegram group. This Telegram group is mainly for uh, yeah, giving advice, answering some questions. So if you have some questions registering a business, register, register as a freelancer in Germany uh, about self-employment visa and all the stuff, you can ask the questions there. And of course, there we're collecting a lot of questions and creating afterwards of course, we will answer, but we will create, <laughs> create videos out of these questions as well. Then we recorded a whole complete list, uh, a tutorial playlist, how to freelance in Germany. Um, this is linked in the video description as well. And then I have some additional information about uh, self-employment visa and so on, about the platform Elster Online. I will come to uh, Elster Online as well. But Elster Online, this is super important if you're doing uh, some self-employment business in Germany because um, Elster Online is the official website for the te for tax authorities. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this website is just uh, in German. So it's uh, it's nearly impossible to, to understand it if you're not uh, native German and even for native Germans, it's super difficult to, to understand the website and what's to, uh, what's to yeah, put in there, how to register and all the, uh, and so on. That's the reason why we recorded uh, tutorials, English tutorials. If you will watch the videos we recorded before, you will notice this is uh, these are voiceover videos. So if you're fine with reading subtitles, uh, you just can check out our German YouTube channel as well. There, there we have way more videos. I think around 160, 170 videos. Most of them with English subtitles. Um, but on this channel, we have uh, uh, a lot of English voiceover videos as well. Yeah, I think this is something you can find in the uh, in the. In the video description, um, there, uh, Hannah is posting already the first question. I will come to this point because before I want to explain uh, the importance uh, of, of the difference of Freiberufler or Gewerbetreibender, but I will definitely come to this point uh, um, 
how and when are you Freiberufler and when are you uh, uh, Gewerbetreibender. And we have created an, an just a separate uh, video for this topic. So you should definitely watch this video as well um, just for, for this topic because this is super important. But as I mentioned, I will come to this point later. And before I should share my screen. Freelancing and taxes in Germany. This is our main topic. Uh, I created a few slides and before let me let me check. Yes, now now you should be able to see me. Maybe I should should move that I'm sitting in the middle. Uh, <laughs> before before I just wanted to say a few sentences about uh, me. Who are, who am I? Uh, I'm Melchior. Um, I'm living in Berlin. I'm born in Berlin. Um, I'm tax expert. I uh, studied uh, business economics and with a focus on tax law and auditing. Um, so uh, in theory, I know all this stuff, what I'm talking about. Um, then I worked for a few years at KPMG. KPMG, most of you should know the name KPMG because they, they are a worldwide audit and tax consulting firm. And then for ETL, ETL is just in German, Germany. It's, I think, one of the most biggest uh, tax consulting firms. So I had a lot of uh, customers in the past um, where, I, where I just had this was the mainly small businesses, self-employed, uh, freelancers, solopreneurs. So I I know not just the theory, I know the consulting side as well. But more, more important, I think, is I, I, I'm self-employed right now for uh, around 15 years as well. So I definitely know that there is a difference between the theory and the execution on a daily basis. And this is what I'm hoping that I can give you some advice on the on the pragmatic side, uh, on the, how to execute it and not just giving you the theory. And at the moment, uh, I'm working at the Conte Steuerberatung, so a tax advisory firm. Um, and there I'm one of the founder. Uh, exactly. This is what I'm... <laughs> Veronika, hello aus KPMG from Ukraine. Awesome. Then we were colleagues <laughs> at this time. <laughs> or we were co colleagues for a while. Uh, super nice. Um, Greetings to KPMG Ukraine. <laughs> um, exactly, this is what I'm. Uh, this is what you should know, maybe about me. Uh, and then now it's uh, it's over <laughs> about myself. Now we're talking more about your questions. Uh, mainly, first of all, uh, about the question I collected uh, behind the camera. Uh, Mert is sitting, and Mert will uh, just go look, have an eye on on your comments, um, and I will answer them afterwards. Um, as I mentioned, I cannot promise that I can answer everything because, to be honest, about especially on, on visa situation, um, this is nothing you're doing normally on a regular basis. I've done this now a, a few times for some customers that, or just friends as well, to be honest. Um, uh, the, and, and I just help them to, to get the freelance visa in, in, in Germany. But um, this is nothing I've done hundreds of times. But uh, I've definitely uh, registered. I think I was involved in hundreds of business registrations in Germany. So about tax liability and setting up a business in Germany, I'm really experienced. <laughs> so there you can really ask nearly every question. Um, and I think the most important question is always, um, what are the next steps? So if I'm now coming to Germany, um, what, what's important? What do I have to do right now? Um, first of all, you need a Meldebescheinigung. So you have to re register your living address in Germany somewhere. Um, I think it's nearly impossible to do anything in Germany uh, if, before you have not, not opened a bank account. So this is the next step. You should uh, open a bank account. Um, there are definitely um, online uh, banks, uh, fintech banks, and they are free. So this is something you should always think of. Maybe there is a free solution. Of course, I can give some tips as a freelancer uh, contest. So our company is uh, is offering a free bank account as well. So this is something you can check out. But this webinar is not just for for selling you bank account. So uh, yeah, 
check it out. You can use uh, uh, another bank account as well. Um, sometimes the Sparkasse and Volksbank, um, they, are, they have really, um, yeah, places where you can go and there are consultants so if you have any problems with your maybe your passport because an online bank and online solution is not accepting your passport then you have maybe to look for a bank account where you just can go and talk to the people in person this is sometimes more helpful but if you want to uh, be a uh, a freelancer and self-employed in Germany, um, you have to register at Elster Online. This is what I uh, mentioned already. This is the uh, platform and the website of the tax authorities. And this is always super difficult, even for Germans, because the language is uh, super uh, yeah, complicated. That's the reason why I recorded a tutorial uh, for this. This is what I just posted in the, in the chat. This is about the registration process uh, for for Elster Online. And this is what you need because otherwise you're not able to get a tax number afterwards and so on. Um, that's the reason why you should do this really early. And just the registration itself doesn't mean that you have to pay taxes in Germany. So you just can, uh, with a living address, a Meldebescheinigung in Germany, you can register at Elster Online, but you don't have to pay taxes. So th this doesn't mean that, that you are somehow uh, tax liable in, in Germany. This is really just the registration. But if you want to start a, uh, your own business in Germany, you have to register uh, at the uh, tax office, at the Finanzamt. So you have to register, uh, you have to fill out the tax registration form. Um, in Germany, uh, we say Fragebogen uh, zur steuerlichen Erfassung. This is what I'm saying because um, uh, you have to look in Elster online for this Fragebogen zur steuerlichen Erfassung. Um, and, but their tutorial is recorded already as well. This is, I think, a really long tutorial, but there I'm really going through step by step by step. And this is what you have to do always if you want to be uh, self-employed in Germany. So this is something you cannot skip or so. Because just afterwards you're getting a text number and this text number is uh, the text number you need for, for putting on your invoice. Otherwise, you're not able to write correct invoices in Germany if you don't have a text number. And about the text number, sorry, I, I, will, I, will, I won't do this the whole time, but for about text numbers, this is confusing in Germany as well because we have three different text numbers. This is a personal text ID, then we have a VAT ID number and the text number which you need for, for your invoices. And this is confusing. That's the reason why I recorded another video for this topic as well. And now I'm, I'm stopping <laughs> just spamming, me, spamming you with other videos. But this is super important because you need this tax number to put on your invoice. If not, the customer won't pay, pay you. Or even if, if the customer is in Germany, they won't pay you. For international clients, they are maybe not that interested in, in the correct uh, invoice in Germany. Then, of course, health insurance in Germany is super important as well. Um, there are a lot of different... Uh, yeah... Providers, this is nothing I want to focus on uh, right now. If yeah, there are any questions, just uh, type in the put it in the chat. Then I will just create a video, do some research, and will just send it. I think share it in, in the Telegram group afterwards. Um, but it's super important because you have to. There is a law that you ha need health insurance in Germany. Um, if you apply for um, uh, paragraph twenty four. Uh, in Germany, uh, you you will get uh, the health insurance paid from the government at the moment as a Ukrainian. Uh, so this is something what should be covered as well. But if you are self-employed and earning money, and I think enough money for paying all your uh, bills on a daily basis, um, then you have to pay for the health insurance on your own. Yes, and then it's possible to apply for the residence permit for freelancer. So the freelance visa. I will come to the, this in the more the more detailed view, but this is the point where you just can do this. And then, of course, afterwards, start your business. Um, if you have already a business, then, of course, you can move to Germany as well and just move your business to Germany. Um, this is, of course, possible as well. And uh, this is... Uh, I will come to this as well, but... You have to do nearly all steps as well. First, do step uh, one. Then you should have 
uh, a German bank account because otherwise with the German tax authorities it's super difficult if you, if you have a, a non-German uh, bank account um, you need a, the whole registration about Elster Online because you need the German tax number um, you need a definitely health insurance so the the process is nearly the same uh, and it doesn't matter whether you have a, have a business or a freelance business already or if you have no freelance business so there, there is not a huge difference but coming to the other questions, I'm seeing some questions coming in. Um, I will come and I will answer these questions, I think, at the end because this is super. F I'm not mu mu multitasking, <laughs> I cannot do, do uh, cannot read and think and talk at the same time. So, I will definitely answer all these questions afterwards. Um, but I can answer the last question. Will there be a recording of the webinar? Yes. Um, in general, I would say, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Um, this video will stay online um, on this channel. It, you just can save the link, but it will be the uh, last video uh, online as well. So you just can watch this afterwards as well. Or just, uh, yeah, I think what I'm explaining now is sometimes a step-by-step -step guide. You can just watch it whenever it's it's time to, to register, for example, at Ulster Online uh, or, or as, a, as a business owner in Germany. And then you just can watch it again. Um, a really uh, a question I'm receiving a lot is, do I have to pay taxes in Germany? And this is super funny because because a lot of Germans moving to another country, they are doing this because they don't want to pay taxes. And my experience is from a lot of uh, Ukrainians right now is they're coming to Germany uh, and they are super interested in, oh, when do I have to pay taxes and how much uh, taxes do I have to pay in Germany? And to be honest, calm down. Of course, um, there are two, uh, two rules uh, when you have to pay taxes in Germany. The, the first thing is if you have a permanent residency uh, in, in, in Germany, then you have to pay taxes in Germany. Or even if you just have a temporary uh, 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 permit in, 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 in Germany, then you don't, don't have to pay taxes if you're just staying less than 183 days in Germany. So if you're just in Germany uh, for five months or four months and then afterwards going back to, back to Ukraine or just moving on to, to France or Canada or Spain or I don't know, every, every country, uh, then you don't have to pay taxes in Germany. So if you're just here for a few months and afterwards you will leave, you don't have to pay taxes in Germany. And this is especially super interesting if you have already a running uh, 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 freelance business in Germany. There is no need to register in Germany if you're just here for two, three, four, five months. Um, you just have to register if you have a permanent residency or if you're staying longer than 183 days uh, in Germany. And then you should register in Germany. If not, you can leave now this webinar. Um, nice, nice to have you as guest in this country, but you don't have to pay taxes here. And you don't have to pay, as I mentioned, you don't have to pay if this is not uh, applies to you, uh, then, then you don't have to, yeah, then, then, the, then the whole topic uh, of paying taxes in Germany is not relevant for you. But if you have to pay taxes in Germany, this is super important as well, you don't have to register today because maybe you don't know what to do in five months or six months. If you're just coming to Germany, you just came to Germany a month ago, so four weeks ago, there is a lot of days left, so you don't have to register the first day uh, uh, here in Germany. And what's super important as well, you have to pay your taxes once in a year, and this the deadline is end of July the uh, following year. So you have to do your tax declaration for this year till the end of July next year. So there is no need to do or pay taxes right now. Of course, you should maybe put some money to the side that you have enough savings for paying the uh, taxes. And this is something I forgot to research before, but I will just do this because there is a calculator from the government where, just can, where you just can put in your, your yearly profit and then uh, you know how much money you should put to the side. But I will uh, just re look for this uh, calculator and post this in the chat. Because this is, I think, important for you. And this is a super easy calculation. Um,
here. The link I posted now in the chat is uh, the calculator. There you just have to put in um, your, your income, your yearly income, um, and if you are married uh, or not, and the year. So if you're talking about this year, of course, take 2020, 20, 20, uh, and then you just can uh, click on calculate, and then it will show you your average tax rate. And the average tax rate is something you have to pay, because the German tax system is not that super easy, uh, and the German tax rate is something between nothing, so 0%. You don't have to pay any taxes, any income taxes, if you are earning less than around 10,000 euro. Uh, so if your yearly income is less than 10,000 euro, you don't have to pay taxes in Germany at all. But it can be uh, around 50% as well. If you are earning a few hundreds of thousands per year, then it can be uh, way more. Um, and yeah, most of the people, of course, are something between uh, zero and 50%. Fine. I'm seeing so many uh, questions coming in. I'm feeling kind of bad <laughs> that I'm ignoring too much. But uh, Mert, you are having uh, an eye on this. Is there something about uh, now residency and so on? If not, I would go on. But uh, if there are some questions about residency, and maybe I should answer, answer them now. Thanks. Um, you... Okay, yeah, here's a, a from Vladislav, for example, a question. Uh, so if I registered myself uh, for as with paragraph 24, but I will this uh, as a freelancer in Germany. Yes, I cannot say that you don't have to uh, pay taxes as a freelancer at all, because this depends on, on Ukrainian law as well. And I don't know the Ukrainian tax law. Um, but in Germany, there is no need to register and there is no need to pay taxes um, if you are, I don't know, for, just for a few months in Germany. Um, yeah, and then there's a question, when do I become a, a German tax resident? I have to live six months in Germany, yes. Or if you're really, uh, if you're having a permanent residency in, in Germany. So if you're really, I don't know, renting an apartment, uh, registering there here for, 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 for not, not just on paragraph 24, if you're just going here for, for, for with a, with a, um, yeah, with a goal to stay here for a way longer time, then you are then you have to pay taxes. Uh, um, sound is bad. Then you are then you have to pay taxes. Uh, is the sound bad for the others as well? For me here now, sound good. Sounds good. So if if you want to stay and, and setting up your whole life, uh, then you have to pay taxes from day one. But if not. Um, then uh, then you don't have to pay taxes. So if you don't know right now, and this is, to be honest, the case in most of you, uh, for most of you, that you just came to Germany, you now have to work somehow, but you're not 100% sure about what's going on in one month, in two months, in three months. Um, there is no need to uh, act immediately uh, and panic somehow that, that you're doing something uh, illegal. No, you're not. If you're just saying here, especially with a paragraph 24, um, then uh, there is no need to register immediately as a self-employed in Germany. You just can uh, stay with, with as a Ukrainian freelancer for a few months in Germany, paying in Ukraine your taxes. It's totally fine. Um Okay, there's so many questions. Um, I'm really afraid that I'm not able to make it through the through my <laughs> prepared points. I think I will just continue, and afterwards I will definitely take some time uh, and 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 go through uh, all questions. Our most questions I cannot. I, it depends on, on the amount of questions. But uh, I think because uh, I, I I prepared already some. There's a logic behind. Uh, uh, the slides because uh, I, I think I will answer a lot of questions before you have uh, the questions. Um, um, exactly. And another question is, especially with this paragraph 24, uh, where do I have to pay taxes if I have a temporary residence permit uh, for uh, right now in Germany? Uh, with, for Yeah, and, and the rule is uh, paragraph 24. And 
this is the same rule if, if uh, normally uh, it's super different because the, the government is changing the, the law all the time. But uh, if you are really willing to stay more than six months and you have a contract uh, in Germany for more than six months, uh, so for your apartment, you're renting apartment for more than six months, then you have to pay taxes in Germany. Um, if not, um, then you don't have to pay taxes in Germany. This is most important. And another question I'm getting really on a daily basis is, uh, am I allowed to work as a Ukrainian, or as a freelancer, as a Ukrainian in Germany with a temporary residency? Uh, this is the question I'm getting a lot. Um, and the answer is yes. Um, but not the the reason why you are allowed is not uh, the uh, temporary residency. Normally you should, or normally, and this is the normal case, you have to apply for work permit as well, additional. Um, and this is, so the, the just, uh, uh, the residence is not giving you the allowance to, to, to work here as well. But um, there is a rule right now just for Ukrainian freelancers. So this is really just for, for, for the Ukrainians uh, of, of you. Um, this is at the moment um, the government decided to give everybody the allowance to work here as well. So according to the federal ministry, the uh, um, yeah, if you apply for 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 residence permit, um, that um, then then you getting the allowance uh, to work here as well. Um, I have a screenshot how it looked like. So it depends on. Um, when you came to uh, Germany, because they th this was not the setup in the beginning. So if you were really really fast and the the after after the beginning of the war and you came to Germany and you got your I don't documents, um, then maybe you don't have this uh, this allowance. Um, and this is a screenshot. I think it yeah. This, you should have something uh, like this. And there you need a cross at the first thing or on the last thing. So the last thing is zur Ausübung einer selbstständigen Tätigkeit. It means that you uh, need a cross uh, for the uh, self-employed uh, work. And this is the third point. And this is something you should now, if you're now uh, going uh, to going there, getting the document uh, with paragraph 24, they should cross this already. This example was really, really early uh, example. So this was really just, uh, I think, three or two days uh, after beginning of the war. And, and there, this wasn't set up, this uh, special rule for Ukrainian freelancers. So it l should look like in your documents another way. So you definitely need to cross the first or the third one. Um, and then you are allowed to work as a freelancer. If you don't have this cross on the right <laughs> on, the, on the right point, you just can go there again and uh, update this document. And then you are allowed to work in Germany as a uh, self-employed as well. But this is super important. And uh, right now, if you just, I'm not 100% sure, I think they changed this in the first week of March. Just check your documents. Uh, if, you, uh, if you came to Germany uh, after, uh, I think first week of March, then you should have already the allowance to work as a as a uh, self-employed in Germany with a temporary residence. And this is super helpful because otherwise everything is coming up. If you don't have this, this is way more work as well. And I want to mention before coming to all your questions uh, is the uh, is the point. Um, are there other ways to stay in Germany as a freelancer? And yes, of course, I mentioned it already. There is a self-employment visa. And of course, you can apply for this uh, visa as well. And this is, um, to be honest, super helpful as well. Um, for me personally, um, this is the best uh, way if you just if 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 it's interesting to for you to stay longer in Germany, building something up in Germany, this is um, a better solution because then you're not dependent on the decision from the government. Because, of course, the government can always uh, change uh, the rules. 
immediately. So paragraph 24, it's now, there is an extra uh, law now, there is an extra rule just for the situation, cause of the war in Ukraine. We don't know how this whole situation is in three months, in six months, in nine months, in 12 months. We don't know. But if you're applying for a freelance visa or self-employment visa in Germany, then you are um, more safe then you have more then you have the safety to plan uh, ahead and and just uh, do all these uh, uh, things uh, to start your business found your business uh, looking for clients acquiring them and all this stuff cause with a self-employment visa then you are uh, independent from the uh, situation at the moment then you just can stay up to three years in Germany and this is uh, of course super important uh, that you are able to plan your f future somehow. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, in Germany, we are looking a lot of, especially in the IT sector for a lot of people, um, a lot of jobs are open, a lot of projects cannot be executed because in Germany, we don't have enough uh, IT capacities. So if you are working in the IT segment, um, then um, this is a really good time to, to come to Germany and just uh, looking for customers because the chance to get this self-employment visa is really high. Uh, unfortunately, this takes longer than uh, the refugee visa, of course, because um, this is just the normal system. There is no fast lane right now. So you could as well uh, apply for paragraph 24 and stay here for a while and during this time going uh, there for for getting a freelance visa as well and if you want to do this i posted the link for the official site from the government so there you can find a lot of information um, but for you super important is you have to uh, you have to understand what you are are you a Freiberufler or Gewerbetreibender in Germany? And I got this question already a few times. Um, this is the video I posted already uh, a few uh, yeah, minutes ago in the chat. This is super important because the, the way and the workflow and the documents you need for applying for a freelance visa is different uh, depending on if you are Freiberufler or Gewerbetreibender. That's the reason why I just want to explain the difference. As a Freiberufler, you you are most of the time you are have a more academic way of of of, of your job, um, and there is a list in the German tax law. So all medical professions such as doctors, dentists, pharmacists, uh, and so on, they are definitely Freiberufler. Uh, in the legal, economic, uh, tax advisory sector uh, area, then you are Freiberufler as well. So such as a lawyer, notary, tax consultant, auditor, and so on. In the technical and scientific uh, field as well, like architect, engineers, uh, and so on, computer scientists, then you are Freiberufler as well, or in the cultural area, such as author, editor, director, uh, and so on, then you are Freiberufler as well. And cause there was this question already as a IT consultant or as a, a software engineer, this is, to be honest, it depends. Because the German tax law is really all old, I think 70, 80, 90 year old, and there weren't no, there weren't uh, software engineers uh, in this time, so the job never existed. But um, there are uh, engineers, so just traditional engineers in the list of Freiberufler. So it really depends on um, how you work. Is if you are more the I would say software architect or if you're working more like an engineer that you really um, are planning your work, if you have more um, and you're coming more from the from the academic way and, and you are more the lead of projects, then it could be that you are Freiberufler. So if you and if, if another way, if, if you're just uh, executing what someone else was has planned before. Um, then you are more the executor, then you are not a Freiberufler, then you are a Gewerbetreibender. So that's the reason why software engineers are not 100% Freiberufler or not 100% uh, Gewerbetreibender. It depends on your way of working. But if you are really uh, the project manager and the doing all the plannings and the structure and all the stuff, then you there, then there is definitely a, a reason why you sh can go the Freiberufler uh, way and not the Gewerbetreibende way. And this is super important because as a Freiberufler, it's way easier <laughs> to, uh, to, to apply uh, for, for the, um, the uh, self-employment visa. 
Um, you can show your expertise, and I will come to this. Uh, um, you can show your expertise, for example, if you have uh, studied something in this field. Um, for example, if you are really, uh, yeah, ha have something, a degree in, in engineers, blah, 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 then you can go uh, for the Freiburgler way. If you have learned everything, I don't know, with the online course, for example, or just learning by doing with no academic background, then it will be more difficult for you to uh, register as a Freiberufler and then you should register as a Gewerbetreibender in Germany. Um, and here we're coming to the requirements. Um, so what, when can you apply for a self-employment visa in Germany as a Freiberufler? So if you're a Freiberufler, you uh, should prove that uh, your project, your business, uh, that you have, a, yeah, that this is financed somehow. To be honest, as a freelancer, this is super easy to prove that your business is financed because you don't need a lot of money for, for running a freelance business. But if you want, for example, want to set up an agency in Germany and you want to hire a lot of people, then doing uh, expensive uh, ad, ad campaigns somehow to acquire the, the biggest customers and so on, then you have to show something like a business model. Then you have to show your business plan that, and, and you have to show that you have the money to start this business in Germany. If you're doing just as a freelance business uh, and you have a all you have already maybe some clients and you just bring the clients and into your, into your freelance business to Germany, um, then it's uh, yeah. That, to be honest, then it's super easy to prove that this uh, is is financed. And as I mentioned, the Freiberufler thing is more from the academic academic way. So you have to. Uh, show your uh, license, your degree, that you are allowed to uh, work uh, in this field in Germany. So, you, yeah, you, you just have to prove that you have these uh, uh, skills and you have this degree. Um, I think super easy it's for lawyers. Of course, in Germany, you are just allowed as a work as a lawyer if you have studied law before. Uh, and this is something you have to prove. Um, yeah, if you cannot prove this, then maybe you just should apply for a Gewerbetreibende. And if you are older than 24, you have to uh, prove that you have a sufficient uh, pension uh, provision somehow. So you need money or you just have to prove that you have some, yeah, some money savings for, for pension. This is super important because of Germany, as, a, as the government Germany, don't want to uh, let people in here register as a, a as a freelancer in Germany, uh, which are maybe just which will work five additional years and afterwards will we'll just get m money from the government. So you just have to prove that you have the money. If you are uh, younger than uh, forty five, this this requirement is irrelevant for you. You just have to can, can apply. Um, yes. If you are not Freiberufler, so if you do, if you're not working in, in such a field like medical professions, legal, economic, and tax advisory field, uh, technical, scientific uh, field, cultural area, and so on, then you are always a uh, Gewerbetreibender. Oh no, I messed up my presentation. Then you are a Gewerbetreibender. Then you can apply as well. Uh, uh, as a freelancer uh, with a self-employed visa, um, but there you have more requirements. So you have to show that there is an economic uh, interest and a need for your product and services. And this is in the IT sector is easy, to be honest, because in the IT sector, there are a lot of people needed in Germany. This is something um, you can just explain and show um, by having some official statistics and so on. Um, if this is interesting and if you want to apply for a freelance visa, um, and this is the truth, I, I don't have endless capacities, but I can help you with setting up all the documents as well. Um, but for this, please uh, join our Telegram group and just write there that you want to apply for, for, for a freelance visa in Germany and I can really help. I won't charge anything for this, but I just can help you uh, setting everything up um, collecting all documents because I know that this is sometimes super difficult if you're not coming from Germany but if you understanding the German bureaucracy and you know how uh, the whole system in Germany is working um, then you just it's easier for me I think to understand the requirements um, and for me I think it's easier to argue why there is a need for your product and for your service but just right now uh, spontaneously I can definitely say if you're working in the IT segment it will be 
easy to prove this. <laughs> and um, then you have to show additional, not, not that that your uh, that your product and service, the type of product and service is needed. You have to show that your activities um, will have a uh, positive impact on the German economy as well. As well. Addition, uh, uh, this I can just uh, repeat myself. This should be super easy if you work worked uh, in the IT segment before and now coming to Germany. Uh, this will be super easy to uh, show why your activities will have a positive impact. And in general, uh, here it's about show that you have secured your financing, uh, your business. This is the same for as 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 for the Freiberufler. Um, Here, just for my personal experiences, of course, this is super helpful if you have already customers. Uh, just maybe you have a company you're working for uh, in Ukraine or somewhere else in the US. I did freelancing over years and most of my clients weren't in Germany, but I had ongoing contracts for, for with companies in, in from the USA, for example, and I worked for other companies in, in southern Europe as well and I had already customers and if I would move in a, into, into another country I would of course just keep my uh, customers because my customers are with me when I'm moving my laptop <laughs> I just have to open my laptop and it start, can, can start work if you can show this and you just can um, yeah just if you just can prove this and, and show it to the to the authorities then it will be super easy because this will definitely show that that your work will definitely have a positive impact because you, you you there is already need if you don't have any customers yet then you can uh, get some letters for example as well with company for, from companies who are interested in your work and if you need this as well um I will come to this point later where you can find this because uh, this letter, for example, or requests from potential clients, this can prove as well that your services are needed in Germany. And the same for the pension system is for Gewerbetreibende. It's, it's, it's the same like for uh, like for like the like Freiberufler. So uh, you just have to show that that you have save, savings on your, on your side if you're older than uh, 45 really important thing and this is what i mentioned before already um the self-employment visa uh, is not dependent on on just spontaneous changes from the government uh, you can stay in uh, for three years in germany and after after a while after a few years you have to show that your business idea is successful so if you can show that that uh, your business is working then you that you can finance your living um and the living of your family if you have a family um then this residence permit can be extended and then you can potentially stay longer but you have this three years uh, in the beginning to show that your business is running to be honest if you are smart enough three years are definitely a lot of time to show and, and keep uh, a freelance business running you have always about this laws have to think uh, bigger companies have to show this somehow as well so if you're setting a traditional way opening i don't know a restaurant this then sometimes it's difficult to prove after three years that your business will will work as if i don't know for example software engineer it's way easier because uh As a software engineer, if you don't, if you're not able to to acquire German customers or customers in Germany, it don't has to be German customers. Please reach out to me. I uh, <laughs> I can definitely find uh, enough customers for you. Then here's a list. Um, this is I don't want to go through every uh, step. Um, these are the documents you should have uh, for applying for the German freelance visa. Um, this is what I mentioned already. Uh, um, if you have something like uh where is it um yeah the last point letters of commitment from future customers um um that you just can so uh, show that your your services are really needed i won't go through all of these points there is a recording you have the presentation linked in the video description as well this is just for you that you have already uh, an idea of which kind type of documents you need um and of course this is Unfortunately, this is a lot of work to get all these documents together, um, but this is something uh, the official authorities will definitely ask for. Yes. 
checking. Oh, I think the time is fine. Uh, <laughs> I I just want want to uh, add one point before I I will uh, have a look at on your questions. Because uh, if you now have registered, it doesn't matter how you registered in, in Germany. If you are with paragraph 24 and the allowance to work as a self-employed in Germany, um, then you have to set up your business somehow. Or if you are applying for a freelance visa uh, and then afterwards you have to register your business, this is independent. So staying in Germany, getting the allowance to work here is the first step. The next step is you have to register your business in Germany. And this is something I've done uh, really dozens, hundreds of times already in my life in Germany. Uh, Conte Steuerberatung is my sixth company. I found it for me, but my wife is self-employed as well, my mom and my dad. And of course, as a client, uh, I had a lot of people <laughs> as well uh, registering a business in Germany. So there I'm really talking about things I can execute while sleeping. Um, first step always, if you are a Freiberufler, we remember this is if you have the profession uh, uh, coming more from the academic way, um, then first step is you have to register at elster.de. This is the link um, or I, I shared already in the chat. It's about uh, registration in Elster Online. I will post this again in the chat. Uh, by the way, I'm super happy that you have so many uh, questions and yeah, I'm feeling kind of bad that I have <laughs> to ignore them somehow. Um, yeah, first thing, register at elster.de. This is our official site for the tax office. This is uh, the first step everybody should do. And afterwards, you should look for this Fragebogen zur steuerlichen Erfassung. This is something you have to fill out before. So this is the questionnaire for, for tax registration in Elster Online. This is the second step. And this is something you have to fill out. As I mentioned, there is a step-by-step -step tutorial where I'm explaining how to do it, what to write, where, and so on. Um, afterwards, you will receive a letter. Yes, no joke, a physical letter to your address. And there is a tax number. And this tax number you need for writing invoices. And then you're done. Then you can start writing invoices. Done. Kind of easy. And uh, regist if you're not a Freiberufler, then you are Gewerbetreibender. Uh, as a Gewerbetreibender, it's a little bit diff more difficult, but it's not super complicated. Um, unfortunately, I know how setting up a business is working in other countries. And that's the reason why I know this Germany is super complicated, especially when you see uh, the, the Fragebogen or the questionnaire and so on. The formulas are horrible, if, even for Germans as well. But as a Gewerbetreibender, as you can see, the difference is not that big. The only difference is the first step. Because if you are a Gewerbetreibender, um, then you have to register your business before at the city where you're living. Uh, um, or sometimes you're not living in a the city, there, there is something uh, respons responsible authority for your area. And then you have to register your business before. You need a Gewerbeschein. Oh, I, will, I will write this here. Gewerbeschein. This is the first step you need. And afterwards, after you have uh, registered at, at the city your business, then the steps are completely the same. Afterwards, you have to register at elster.de, uh, they fill out the Fragebogen zur steuerlichen Erfassung, um, then the tax office will send you the tax number, and so on. Of course, in detail, there are a lot of additional uh, things to take care of. There are some authorities contacting you, asking you uh, stuff, and so on. The only suggestion, uh, the only thing I can give you here right now uh, um, is, and this may this maybe sounds stupid, but uh, we are the only English channel explaining German uh, freelance bureaucracy, uh, self-employment bureaucracy, founding questions, and so on. We are the only YouTube channel. All our videos are for free. We won't sell you anything. So just subscribe to the channel, watch through all the videos and write comments. Um, I really will take the time uh, to answer all these comments on other the videos. And if there are some questions, recurring questions, I will definitely uh, create videos um, Yeah, for this topic. 
And of course, you can join uh, the Telegram group as well. There we will definitely answer all uh, related questions. And if you have, I don't know, if you really have a question for a document or a specific field in the formula, just yeah, create a screenshot, ask the question, and I'm really happy to uh, support. Uh, as I mentioned, we won't charge for this. Um, my hope is that we can support as many po people as possible uh, to set up a business here. And if, if we have done this, it's good for you, it's good for the country, it's good for everyone. And you are able to work and, and uh, earn money here and so on. I think this is the thing I can, uh, hopefully I can support a few people with this. Um, that's the reason why we're doing this. Last final point and now really last point before coming to your questions is where to find jobs in Germany. Of course, you just can reach out. Um, by the way, Contest or Contest Steuerberatung. So we are looking for IT freelancers, especially software engineers always as well. So if you're looking for a job, uh, maybe check out our career page. This should be interesting as well uh, for a few people. Um, so if you're just looking for, for a job, I think freelance is fine as well. Matt, do you have any ideas? Freelance is fine or not? Freelance.com? No, we're working with uh, freelancers uh, at Contest. I think yes. So if you want to look for a customer, check out uh, our career page, <laughs> apply for a job. But of course, there are a lot of freelance platforms as well. I'm, I, I don't want to talk too much about every platform. Um, I think because a few of, of these platforms you can know already. Upwork, for example, is a platform. It's it's, it's uh, yeah, it's worldwide active. But of course, there are German clients as well. Fiverr.com as well. Freelancer.com uh, It's more international. There are not that many uh, German companies on that. Um, what I want to really share is Malt. Malt is really just a German and uh, a French website. And that's, uh, this is interesting. That's the reason why I want to make uh, a point here because they are really focusing on the customer side on German and French companies as well. And this means that the hourly rate of your daily rate is way higher than on all the other platforms. So on Upwork, Fiverr, Freelancer.com, it's fine. To, uh, it's fine. You can find uh, some customers, but getting really uh, good paid, uh, high, highly paid uh, gigs is difficult on the website. So um, I would check out definitely Malt. Um, I'm not getting any provision for this, uh, but I worked as a freelancer uh, on Malt as well. And um, that's the reason why I definitely can recommend uh, Malt right now. And Malt have set up a special promotion for Ukrainian freelancers. They won't take any fees right now. Um, there is, uh, you can find more information um, as, as well in the video description. I think super important here is that there is a uh, filter option on Malt. So companies, clients can just filter for Ukrainian freelancers. If you're doing this, I've just shared the link and this is really new. Um, the, the, you just can use can use the hashtag Ukrainian freelance on your profile. Then the custom, uh, then the, the then the companies are able to just look for this uh, hashtag, and then they will find you. And they will run a lot of promotion about it. And uh, as soon as we have reached ten Ukrainian freelancers, um, and that's the reason why I need some people signing up at Malt, because then we can spread the word. Then then we will talk to a lot of uh, in my personal network as well. And Malt will send out a newsletter to all the existing customers um, asking them for checking out the Ukrainian freelancers. So if you're now really looking for for freelance gigs, register at Malt. It's free. Um, they're not they're not taking any fees from Ukrainian freelancers. That's the important thing th that you really have to use this hashtag. Then they won't charge you. Then they will promote your profile um, and so on. I think there is one profile online. This is from Julia. Julia helped a lot with creating all this offer uh, for, for for preparing this webinar as well. And she uh, created a whole tutorial playlist about uh, freelancing in Germany and this is in Ukrainian language. So you don't have to listen to my bad uh, English skills. You just can watch the whole tutorial about setting up a business in Germany uh, and finding clients in Germany uh, in Ukrainian language as well. And um, yeah, Julia created all of this. Uh, Julia is uh, the profile you can find as a, as a case here as well. 
By the way, Julia is living at my at my uh, place at the moment. So she's living together with my wife and my daughter uh, in my home. Uh, it's a friend of a friend, uh, but she lived there now. And this this is the reason mainly why we're doing this here, because this is the reason why I want to support uh, as many Ukrainian freelancers as possible. Um, so if you're really looking for customers, I think this is really the best place to to find customers right now. Um, and there is a the reason why Malt is really nice as well, um, Malt is taking all the invoicing as well. You have uh, always, of course, if you're signing up now a business, I, I've shown you the, the few steps what you have to do uh, to register a business. But afterwards, of course, you have to write invoices and correct invoices. Um, and this is sometimes super difficult. And this is, uh, this is something illustrating. You can see maybe the, the I, I used myself as an emoji. Uh, so looking here, um, you, you're doing the work. To the customer, you're sending, you're sending uh, your work. And uh, Malt will automatically create a correct invoice so you don't have any problems and you don't have to do anything about uh, writing correct invoices because Malt will do this automatically. You will have the contract and the invoices on the platform and uh, Malt will take the money from the company and will pay you uh, the money on your bank account. That's the reason why you should have a German bank account. It's working with international bank accounts as well, but with the German, it's way easier. Um, and I know this because we are, a, we as Contest, we are a customer uh, on Malt as well. We and we are hiring on a regular basis uh, freelancers on Malt as well. That's the reason why I know both sides because I did freelancing on Malt and we are a customer uh, on Malt as well and we are hiring freelancers. This is the reason why I would say use Malt for, for writing your invoices um, if there are no fees uh, good for you. Um, you of course, you do, there is no need to use it. You just can write your invoices with, with I don't know, Google Docs or Excel or I don't know what as well. You just can do uh, use invoicing tools as well. But uh, this is helping. Um, then last, really super last question. And this is just, I, I edited it just because I, I got already the uh, question five times just today uh, for the webinar. <laughs> it's uh, what's about Scheinselbstständigkeit? If you've never heard Scheinselbstständigkeit, you can ignore this answer, but um, I'm hearing this a lot because I, as I, as far as I understand, in uh, Ukraine, it is really common to have one big client or just two big uh, customers and they are paying you a lot of money. And this is totally fine in Ukraine, um, but in Germany, it's forbidden. So there is a, this is not allowed to have one single uh, big client as a self-employed. Um, we name this in Germany, it's Scheinselbstständigkeit. The best trans translation is, is something like fake self-employment. And uh, the German government is really strict about it. And it's just forbidden because um, as a company for your employees, you have to pay all the all the insurances, the health insurance, the pension, uh, taxes and so on. And uh, as a as a client from a self-employed, you don't have to pay this. That's the reason why Germany is super strict about it. And I can see and hear this everywhere. There is so much uh, uh, wrong information about this in social media groups and, and even, even uh, good uh, sources are sometimes not 100% safe about the Scheinselbstständigkeits topic. For you, as, a, uh, as an expert now coming uh, to Germany, you don't have any problems if your customer and your client is not in Germany. So if your customer is a company in Ukraine or in the US or somewhere else, you won't have any problems with uh, this Scheinselbstständigkeit. This, you, can, you can ignore this whole topic. But even if your client is based in Germany, um, then there is no problem if you are open and looking for new customers. So if you can prove if there is, for example, uh, yeah, an audit somehow, and you can show that you have been always open for new clients, but you, the, the working together with your customer always worked fine, then you don't have to, uh, then you don't need a second customer. And this is, to be honest, even for native uh, Germans uh, freelancing in Germany, always confusing. And uh, you, it's allowed to have one just single customer. You just have to be open uh, for other potential customers. And uh, 
what's important here as well, I haven't wrote it down here. Um, what's happening if the worst case is happening and there is an audit and they're deciding, okay, you're really a fake self-employed in Germany and then your client have to pay all the insurances. So you, there is no financial risk for you. But of course, if you have a contract for the for a German client and, and you're German, uh, German self-employed and you are fake self-employed, then the client has to pay a lot of money because they have to uh, have to pay all, all the insurances and taxes on top afterwards. So there is no financial risk for you, but definitely you will lose this uh, customer because this customer will immediately stop working together with this uh, with with self-employed people. So in general, there is not a big uh, risk for you. Um, but this is something I wanted to mention here on this side because I really received this question so often that I thought, okay, maybe I should answer this once here. And then finally, we are through all the questions I got before and sorry for taking so much of your time already. Uh, this is already around an hour. Um, of course, I can look at your questions now as well. Hopefully some of your questions are already answered. Uh, if not, we will have a long evening. <laughs> but um, yes. Let me check your question. And for all the people maybe just uh, uh, coming to this webinar saying, okay, nice, I just wanted to uh, listen to something. I'm not 100% sure. I just want to be informed. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, good luck for, for setting up a business or not setting up a business. Uh, I, don't, I don't care personally. Um, hopefully you have learned something and you have more, yeah, more now a concrete uh, idea how, how this whole founding a business visa and so on is working here. If you have open questions, uh, of course, you're invited to uh, stay in the webinar. Um, Elena, last question. Uh, talking about Transactionicate, can I have one big customer uh, uh, and a few small? Of course. This, there is absolutely no problem. Uh, if you have more customers, you're completely out of this topic anyway. There, there is no Transactionicate for you uh, uh, if you have more than one uh, a customer. Um, oof. Matt, Matt collected a lot of questions. <laughs> okay, I will go through. Um, oh, uh, the first question. Maybe you can recommend a fintech bank with English support. Yes. Contest. So our website, you just have to use the English version. Then you can find a business bank account uh, with English support. And you can, um, to be honest, you can just sign up uh, uh, with your Ukrainian passport. I, th I know that there are some older versions of Ukrainian passport. I don't know because uh, I heard already for, for, from a few people that this wasn't that easy to do online. But uh, as I mentioned, Julia is living at my place. I'm supporting her on a daily basis right now with setting everything up and so on. And this was super easy for her to uh, register um, uh, uh, and, and get a, a, a contest bank account. This was super easy. Maybe just a single sentence, uh, sorry for the ad, um, but the good thing about contest is contest is putting the taxes to the side. So you have a business bank account and uh, contest will put the, the taxes to the side. Could be that you have 3,000 euro on your business bank account, but just uh, 3,000 uh, from, th from this 3,000 euro, just one and a half thousand is yours, and the rest you have to put to the side for taxes, for VAT and income tax. And this is, of course, something you should know on a daily basis. Because as I mentioned, you uh, have to pay your taxes in the be beginning once in a year. So, of course, it's maybe a little bit too late if you know. Um, uh, in July next year, what's to pay uh, for taxes uh, for this year. And this is, of course, uh, way too late. So you, you should have an overview on a daily basis. And this is something what uh, Contis is doing for you on a regular basis autom in an automated way. So, at ended. <laughs> no more additional promotion. Um, 
Uh, then there's a question, but the VIT ID number is needed for more than 20, uh, 21k euro yearly income. Can a small freelancer work sometimes without it or do you recommend to get it from the very begin? Um, yeah, you should have this uh, if you are making more revenue, but um, you should have this before as well. Course, um, you can put this uh, in the settings if you're, for example, using some platforms, online tools, and so on. If you are a customer from a company uh, abroad, so if for, from another, can if you're a customer of a company in another uh, European country, for example, as well, uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Creative, Adobe, Creative Cloud, um, or if you're a customer from Google and you're running ads or you you think the G Suite and you're paying for this, um, then you have this uh, setting, um, th then you have to pay VAT or if you're putting in the, the VAT ID number, um, then you don't have to pay this VAT on this invoice. And this, of course, is super interesting because you're paying less taxes. So I always recommend to having this VAT ID number um, and putting it everywhere for all online tools because most of the, of the online tools you can use, they have their company uh, based in Ireland or Luxembourg or... I don't know where, but mostly in other European countries. That's the reason why I would always recommend uh, having this VAT ID number. And this is something, I think I posted this already, where the, the difference between the tax numbers, uh, this is something uh, I created, where, a topic where I created already a video where explaining the difference. Because, yeah, as you mentioned, you don't need this tax number. You can start your business without as well. But this... It, it doesn't cost anything. So just why not apply? Um, then there's a question. So I may have one client in Ukraine pay taxes in Germany and it will be okay. Yes, this is completely fine. Uh, depends on, I think if, if you're staying uh, less than six months in Germany, you don't have to pay uh, taxes in Germany. So you just can keep paying taxes in Ukraine. Um, then it's co completely fine. But even if you would register as a freelance business in Germany, setting everything up as a freelance with a freelance visa, and you have still your one client in Ukraine, there is no problem uh, with, with the Scheinselbstständigkeit or this fake uh, self-employment. There is absolutely no problem with this. Um, and it's super, it will be super easy if you have and keep this one client, this will be super easy for you to show to the, to, to the German authorities that your service is needed. Because um, you already bringing your customer to Germany, no one in Germany would complain if you coming to Germany saying, "Here is my customer, here is my revenue. Now I want to live here and pay my taxes here." This is good for the German country, and this is super easy to explain to the authorities. There is no bad sign uh, side of this, so you definitely don't have to take uh, think about uh, any uh, uh, Scheinselbstständigkeit topics. Next question. Is it the same process to work as a contractor for a company or uh, it will be considered as a false self-employment, Scheinselbstständigkeit? Is it the same process? It depends on where you are, uh, where your contractor is based. If the contractor is uh, abroad, it's not in Germany, you don't have to think about anything. And even if I mentioned, even if you are in, in, in Germany and the contractor is in Germany, but you are open for other customers and talking to potential new customers, you don't have any problems as well. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing this uh, Scheinselbstständigkeit thing so often, but to be honest, it was never a problem. For, uh, it was nearly never a problem for the self-employed. It was always a problem for the contractor or the client and never for the self-employed or nearly never. <laughs> Because otherwise, if you're not saying nearly uh, or <laughs> near, always, it's always, there is maybe one single uh, case where it became a problem. Um, next question. If you receive the residence permit according to the paragraph 24 for two years, should you pay taxes in Germany? Uh, does it start from the time uh, obtaining the residence permit? It's starting with the year you are in Germany. So if you're getting this and starting... Uh, uh, this year, you have to do a tax declaration already for this year. Um, but um, maybe you have paid taxes for this year already in Ukraine. 
and this is in general an interesting topic. Um, I haven't uh, mentioned this. If you have now moving to Germany, uh, registering in Germany, you have to do the first tax declaration this year um, in Germany. Um, there is a contract between Germany and Ukraine that you can uh, that that you don't have to pay double taxes. So what you've paid already in taxes in Ukraine, you don't have to pay again in Germany. Um, this is not not. Germany doesn't have to doesn't have a contract with all other countries in the world, but you, with Ukraine there is this uh, contract. This contract is named DBR Doppelbesteuerungsabkommen. So they they they, are, uh, they have uh, um, agreed on which uh, how to handle um, cross border income somehow. And if you have paid already taxes on income in Ukraine, it could be that you get the money back, or it could be that you can just. Uh, take this uh, taxes you have paid in Ukraine already as a uh, something like a prepayment in Germany um, depends on your type of income so I cannot answer this for your case specifically um, if you're interested in this join to our telegram group ask the question there then I can just do some research but you have to explain and tell me um, what kind of income you have and then I can check this um, but you have to do the first declara tax declaration for this whole year. There, there is no way to do a tax declaration for just a part of just a few months or just a part of the year. And the next question. As a freelancer, should I pay for all my software services myself better for taxation or I can I use something that uh, the clients provides? To be honest, this is completely up to you. This is, you should never, and this is... <laughs> Welcome to Germany. This is the most German question I've heard uh, uh, today because in Germany we're always thinking how how can I save taxes? You can deduct all costs you have uh, because you have to pay, uh, pay taxes on your profit, not on your revenue. This is super important and that's the reason why you can every business expense will reduce your, your taxes. And of course this is uh, interesting to know. But for example, if a customer is offering you 5K per month and you can now decide working with a laptop from the company and uh, or buying your own a company or using your own software or the software from the company and you would get 5,000 euro per month anyway, then of course I would suggest not having the own costs to just save taxes. Saving taxes should be never the priority number one. Earning the mo earning money should be priority number one. And after having the best setup financially, from the financial perspective, afterwards you can think about uh, saving taxes. But step one is always making money. <laughs> Um, next question. Can you please give a few examples on how much taxes are paid by freelancers uh, online sales? Um, this is, of course, as I mentioned, um, if you have, for example, um, uh, 10,000 euro income, you don't have to pay any taxes uh, in Germany. Um, I just can calculate. If you're making 30,000 uh, euro profit this year and I'm not married, then I have to put 16% uh, to the side. So 30,000 euro income per year is 16%, for example. Um, then I just can uh, post this as well uh, again in the chat. So I just, just can play around as well. If, if I would earn 60,000 per year, and then I have to put 26% uh, uh, to the side, um, it's already more. Um, if I'm really rich and I'm making 150,000 euro profit per year as a uh, one man show, then I have to put uh, 35% uh, to the side. Uh, yeah, as a, and to be honest, now I'm curious as well. What about 1 million profit per year? Then I have to put, okay, then we are really close to this uh, 50%, but with 1 million profit per year, you have to put uh, 45% uh, from, from your profit to the side for taxes. Then it's becoming really expensive. But to be honest, if you're making 1 million profit per year, then you should uh, then you should uh, decide for a country more for tax reasons because there there are way cheaper solutions <laughs> to live than than Germany. <laughs> oh. 
Ah, super interesting as well. Uh, what expenses can you uh, subtract? Uh, so, so what business expenses you can have uh, from the amount of re revenue you can pay? And now, Mert, you, it's, the link is coming from you or not? It's, there is already a YouTube channel. I Hopefully, this is not something nasty I'm, I'm sharing right now. No, it's not. There is, it's a German video where explaining which costs you can, you can uh, use in your accounting, uh, which costs you can have in your business to uh, save your taxes. There is, it's, it's a German video, but uh, with English subtitles. Um, in general, uh, check out the channel. If you're clicking on the last link, um, the, we have a way bigger YouTube channel as well. Um, with, uh, I don't know, four and a half thousand subscribers, around four and a half thousand subscribers. Most of the videos have uh, uh, English subtitles because there you can find a lot. And just the quick answer here, you can, everything, every cost uh, expense related to income, it can be income in the past, it can be income for today or future income as well. For example, if you want to do some coaching or business mentoring or you want you want to start uh, studying uh, in Germany, you can uh, take this money already in, in uh, as business expense. You can reduce your taxes and maybe just if you now start uh, studying something, of course, you will have over years just costs and afterwards you will earn money. Um, but uh you can uh yeah reduce your taxes already today um so everything related to some kind of uh self employment income you just can uh use uh in your accounting and uh, save taxes with this um What type of health insurance can I get f uh, for me and my family as a freelancer to be honest. To be completely honest with you, I'm absolutely no expert in, in health insurances because the insurance system in Germany is completely different uh, to the tax system. Um, but I've found a source. Let me check whether I'm able to find it uh, uh, again. Because I found an interesting website and this was really helpful. To be honest, I, I, I not find this now on a really fast. I can, I, 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 to be honest, I cannot completely recommend it because I'm, I'm not a customer about, about this, but I heard from, from a few people um, that this is really young, innovative uh, Uh, health insurance and this is something maybe something you can check out um, I don't have any personal uh, experiences with this this is what I just uh, saying but as I mentioned I'm not the super expert in, in health insurances if this topic health insurance is in general interesting uh, for you just write down a comment um, because uh, then I can do some research and create a video for this channel Uh, that we're just talking about uh, health insurance, but before I have to talk uh, uh, to to some experts, because <laughs> I'm not the expert. <clears throat> so now, next question. I'm a private entrepreneur from Ukraine and all my money I get, I'm receiving as a private entrepreneur and pay 5% in Ukraine. I'm making graphic designs. Uh, I want to be selbstständig in Germany. Uh, in German, taxes are higher. C can I be selbstständig and pay part of my taxes in Germany and part in Ukraine? And how to do it legally and correctly? This is super interesting. For, for you, first of all, it's super interesting. If you're doing graphic design, you're definitely Freiberufler. This is the first thing. This is nothing you asked for, but this is this is a really easy case. <laughs> graphic design, it's Freiberufler. I know that this uh, private entrepreneur, we don't have such a rule uh, in, in Germany, unfortunately. Um, the only thing I would suggest for you now is um, staying as long as possible uh, keeping the status of, of Ukrainian freelancer, uh, paying uh, in Ukraine uh, your taxes and just afterwards, maybe after the, this 183 days, uh, registering in Germany and then paying taxes in Germany. Because this 5%, I, this is, 
I'm pretty sure that you you just have to pay additional taxes. So this 5%, this is something like a prepayment for the German taxes if you're registered in Germany. But if your income, if you just have to pay, for example, 20% on your income, uh, on your profit in Germany, then Germany will just take, take the 5% from Ukraine and then you just have, have to pay the difference. So 15% in Germany additional. This, of course, will end in a way lower net income. So... Um, my suggestion would be stay as long as possible Ukrainian freelancer and just after uh, this time period of 183 days register in Germany and then afterwards pay uh, taxes in Germany. Next question. Do I have to get a freelance visa to work as a self-employed in Germany if I have to residence permit for three years according to paragraph 24 uh, paragraph? No, this is something I will just shortly share again because we had this point in this presentation. You need, if you have this paragraph 24 uh, temporary permit, uh, re temporary residency, uh, residence, then you should have something like this. Uh, so you should have uh, a document Oh, is it still working? Yeah, it's still working. I was confused. I was frozen on my own. Um, then you should have something like uh, this, a uh, part of this in your documents. And there definitely the first or the third uh, uh, point has to be uh, crossed. And then you are allowed to work as a freelancer in Germany as well. And normally you should have this already set up because the German uh, government decided to give it... Uh, without uh, requesting it to every uh, Ukrainian freelancer, but it took a while. So if you were really early uh, coming to Germany after the beginning of the war, then um, then it could be that you don't have uh, a cross uh, at the third uh, bullet point. Um, then you can change it uh, and then you just can start freelancing. So there is no need for, for applying for freelance visa. The only reason why to apply for freelance visa, if you know already that you want to stay in Germany and you want to build, build up something in Germany, something sustainable, and if you don't want to be dependent on the decisions from the government, then of course you just can decide, okay, I, I want to stay here right now. I want to uh, be secure and safe that I can stay here for three years um, then this, this would be a reason to apply for a freelance visa. But you, for example, you can uh, stay here with the residence paragraph 24 as well, and then afterwards apply for the freelance visa as well. So let me go back. Next, oh, super many questions. So if, if I'm alone, here, how many people? Oh, there are some people. Nice, I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> Should I uh, move the re more recent questions up so people are here can... Uh, yeah, listen? yeah. I think, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure uh, if I'm able to answer all your questions. Uh, now I received... Uh, I we receiving so much. I'm super, super happy about your all your questions and... I'm thinking about what the best way, because I don't, uh, yeah. Let's make a document on Telegram group and I can save all these open questions. And yeah, we can just nice. Mert, the voice from the off, I, I, I think you cannot hear Mert's uh, voice because he's don't have a microphone, but uh, we will definitely uh, collect all the questions out of the chat. We'll create a, a Google, Google Doc and we'll answer all the questions um, uh, in a written form. I think this should be easier for you as well because then we can put uh, some additional links, uh, additional paragraph and, and so on in there that you just can find your answer. This, this is something we should be able to do until the end of the week or not. If not, we will just write down why we don't have an answer uh, for a specific question because there are questions I cannot answer, of course. Uh, yeah, and the question, there is a recording. Just save this link, subscribe to the channel. It will be uh, public, uh, this recording. So this is something um, we can definitely do. Then then we don't have to sit together for, for, for the next five hours. <laughs> then we just can do this. 
um, and we will so just uh, come to the join join to the telegram group but uh, we will link this in the video description of this video as well this is something you can expect on friday i think nice matt nice idea okay then i will just take just because i'm in, in such a flow i have five last questions five <laughs> um Next question from Victoria. But if I'm uh, only an Ukraine freelancer and will live in Germany for more than six months, I need to open this uh, German thing to pay taxes in Germany. Do I understand it correct? Yes, you have. This is completely right. Uh, if you're staying for more than six months here and you have been already f freelancer in Ukraine, you're just moving your business from Ukraine to Germany from a tax perspective. And of course, you're completely open to move back uh, afterwards as well. Um, next question, super interesting question as well. Uh, is it allowed to select two options, employer and self-employed, while applying to paragraph 24? Yes, if you have uh, a cross for every bullet point, then no problem. Uh, you just can have uh, m multiple sources of income as well. Uh, for example, employment, self-employment. In theory, you can have different self-employments as well and different employments as well. So just... Uh, do your thing <laughs> earn the money uh, no one will complain if you have the cross on the right uh, bullet points this is about uh, the screenshot i shared um next question if i study uh, until midsummer can i count the last few months as an expense um it depends on your uh business type on on your what you're studying and what do you plan to do as a self-employed but in general you can use your costs for for university and so on as an expense yes definitely that is possible but a little bit depends on uh have you already running business do you planning to do a business and all this stuff so it's not completely yes or no it's a little bit depends on whether this is connected for example if you're now planning to work as a graphic designer but you're studying i don't know german history there is no connection and then of course you cannot uh, use your your cost for university as an expense because there is no uh, connection Julia is asking any German accounting apps widgets in English you could recommend to help file the taxes um, To be honest, I've never checked uh, whether these websites are available in English as well uh, There is one for me personally. The, uh, this is the best accounting software um, I'm checking whether this is existing in english as well i just can copy paste uh, the link here as well maybe you just can check uh uh on your own uh lex office uh is the best cloud accounting software you can have um as a self-employed of course you can look for a tax advisor as well um and okay now i'm finally one time i will mention this we are a tax advisor and we are helping self-employed with setting up the business and all the stuff so if you have uh, enough income we uh, our our monthly fee is starting with uh 79 euro per month and of course then we can do everything for you we can do your business registration in germany we can uh, do your accounting we can do your vat uh, declaration uh, the income tax calculation and all the things so uh, starting from 79 euro per month we can take over everything uh, for you um you just have to check uh our tax service so this is really the completely uh outsourcing service uh, and then our tax experts are able to speak english as well so we just can explain how to do this in germany and then you can use this and we will execute everything for you this is this is my our main business what we're doing on a daily basis if you're not recording webinars <laughs> Um, yeah, N last question. If I have a permanent residence uh, but not living in Germany longer than 183 days, should I still pay taxes? Yeah, you have to. So always about uh, tax liability is you have a permanent residence in Germany or you're staying longer than 183 days. If you have a permanent residence, it doesn't matter for how long you are in Germany, then you have to pay taxes in Germany. I had this as well because I was living uh, around two years abroad 
uh, was not living in Germany, but I had a permanent residence. That's the reason why I paid the whole two years completely my, all my taxes in Germany because I had this permanent residence even if I wasn't uh, in Germany uh, for two years. Done. This was the last question. I will answer here in this round. I think now we are close to 90 minutes. Sounds like a good soccer game. Uh, <laughs> um, you will find all the answers to all the other questions um, in the document linked in the video description. Uh, I think you can check it out uh, on, 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 uh, in, in the Telegram group. Uh, the link to the Telegram group is in the video description. And in the video description, starting from Friday afternoon, you will find the document with uh, all the answers as well. Um, and I think we will just set up that you can ask comments in this doc as well. Then you just can, if you're not happy with our answer, you just can ask again. And uh, hopefully then we may, we can collect all the relevant information. And final call, um, uh, subscribe to the channel. If there is a need, and I was super positive surprised, positively surprised that so many people uh, were here in the webinar, if you are interested in such a format, we can do this. I'm completely fine in doing this on a weekly basis. For me, um, from a level of, of, of text know-how, this is not super complicated. We can do this on a weekly, weekly basis and then we just can go, go through uh, different topics. So if, if there is a need, just write it now in the comments. Uh, then uh, I will just look for a new date and then we just uh, do it again. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Awesome. Was a pleasure. Okay. I'm seeing this already a few times. Then you should definitely subscribe to the channel because we will have uh, upcoming webinars on this channel as well. <laughs> okay. Nice. Thank you for your time. Um, good luck with uh, setting up your business or maybe not setting up your business because I think this is super important that you don't have to pay taxes if you're doing or living right now in Germany and you're not staying longer than uh, six months in Germany. Thanks. Bye-bye.